ओम विष्णु पाद जगत गुरु शिल भक्ति सुन लो गोविंद देव गोस्वामी महाराज की जय राम विष्णु पाद परमहंस खुल चुल मनी साहब शस्त्र सिद्धांत वे शिल भक्ति रखा श्रीदा देव गोस्वामी महाराज की जय जय भगवान शिल भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर की जय रूपानुग गुरुवाग्य की जय नमाचार्य शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभुनिंद श्रीद्वैत कदाधा श्री वास अदि श्री गोर भक्त वृंद की जाय जाय श्री चैतन्य सर्वथ आचार्य वृंद की जाय साम द्वैत वैष्णव मंडल की जाय को कार्तल की जाय श्री हरिनाम संकीर्तन की जाय अनिताय गौर प्रेम Welcome everybody. Nice to see everyone, especially to see Swamishan Prabhu of Jayananda Prabhu from Ireland, heading up our team in our Limerick Centre. On a flying visit, I heard from. So very, we feel blessed that you came to join with us today. So this is our weekly broadcast from. The East London branch of Sri Caitanya Sarasvati Mart, and uh, as usual at the moment, we're going through the the uh, seminal works of our founder Acharya Om Vishnu Pad, Shila Bhakti Rakak Sri Dadev Goswami Maharaj, and today is the Adivas of his Viraha Mahotsava, the day of his disappearance, which is tomorrow. We'll be holding a festival here, and they'll be holding a festival in our West London branch also. So if you can come to either or both, if you're very clever, then please try and come. And um, so, what can we say? So we've been in recent weeks. We've been going through the the five first books, which Sri Lankavinda Maharaj describes as his five deities, and uh, uh, sort of concurrent with those, uh, there were a number of books published called the uh, Sermons of the Guardian of Devotion. So now we started on we're starting on volume one of the sermons. There were four volumes, um, and more or less. Out of print now, but we have a few copies here and there. Um, and this is the first volume, chapter two, the, di- <coughs> the direction to your wealth. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I should just say before, as we're all here, we have to we have to close the garden at the moment because there's building works going on out there, and there's a lot of like hazardous things there with nails sticking out and. And so we don't want, especially we don't want children going out there and, you know, hurting themselves or anyone, in fact, going out there and hurting themselves. So we've closed that off, and we'll be um, taking prasadam in the basement and the temple room, and depending on how many people are here today. <coughs> so, the direction to your wealth, chapter two. So this is Sri Lushudama speaking in English. This, this isn't a translation of his um, writings in Bengali or Sanskrit. This is his direct English speak- spoken lectures, which have been edited and presented in these volumes. Sri Chaitanya Day is both Radha and Krishna combined. He is Krishna. in the mood of radha searching for himself he is both the positive and the negative aspect of the absolute combined the shankara school and other impersonalists claim that when the positive and negative combine the result is a kind of equilibrium but according to vaishnava philosophy the combination is dynamic his nature becomes that of searching for himself searching for his own positive self in the mood of the negative 
In that search, he distributes himself to others. This negative attracts the positive, and the positive is thus distributed to the public. This is the essence of Sri Chaitanya Dev. The intimate associates of the Lord have revealed such a conception, and we shall be able to conceive it according to the intensity and degree of our faith. Faith is the only instrument for the finite to measure the infinite. To survey the infinite, all other methods are futile. Faith is the most, most spacious substance within us. It can cover a long, long distance. In the infinite, what faith can we have in faith? We fear blind faith, yet in the infinite, the impossible becomes possible. Everything is possible, but only faith has the possibility of connecting us with the infinite, while all other methods are useless. So generally, we, when we think about faith, we think of it as something kind of nebulous. You know, I believe in this, I believe in that, I believe in fairies at the bottom of our garden, or, you know, whatever it may be. But, but actually, faith is very intrinsic to everything. In fact, I would say that every single thing that we do is an act of faith. Everything. Although we may not you know, contemplate it in that way, it, it just naturally is that. So, for example, when you wake up in the morning, you have faith that the sun's ri rising or going to rise or risen. You don't think, oh, maybe it's not going to happen today, you know. Of course, in England, you don't always witness the sun coming up. But, uh, but we know that behind those clouds, the sun has risen. And, you know, we eat our, you know, cocoa pops or whatever it is, because we have some faith that that will give us some nutrition and, you know, we'll, we, it won't be poisoned. We go on, walk down the road one foot in front of the other because we have faith that the earth isn't going to swallow us up, it's going to support us. So you can apply that to every single thing that you do. Some kind of intrinsic faith is already there. So faith isn't nebulous at all, it's actually intrinsic to who we are and what we are. But the faith that Srila Guru Maharaj is talking about is called in Sanskrit Shraddha. And Shraddha means faith in something sublime, something unseen and unseeable, unknown and unknowable. So that's a different, a different category of faith. And maybe that does require some contemplation and acceptance of that, like a conscious acceptance of that. In Mahaprabhu's philosophy, which is technically called uh, Achinta Veda Ved Siddhanta, and that means inconceivably one and different. So that, that word atintya, inconceivable, is deliberate. Could just say veda veda tattva, oneness and, uh, and difference simultaneously. But actually, for, before that, you have to accept the, the principle of atintya. That, that actually the infinite is inconceivable to us. And we're, we are, as Guru Maharaj says, we are travelers in the infinite. And why, when we are travelers in the infinite, only faith can guide us there. Nothing else can guide us. Like every, every phenomena in this world has a particular um, corresponding um, sense or um, method by which we can understand it. If you're looking at a great painting, for example, it's not, it doesn't um, benefit you from trying to examine it with a microscope. You won't see what the artist intends to convey through a mic. It's the wrong instrument. So similarly, when we are contemplating or trying to assess the infinite, intelligence can't help us. Our intelligence can can only take us so far. And ultimately it will become a bar to our progress in spiritual life.
because uh, the infinite is beyond our finite intellectual capacity to understand. So as Sri Dharmaraj would say, what will you know with your puppy brain? You, you have a puppy brain, and what can a puppy's brain understand? So, and once when Guru Maharaj was giving, famously was giving, he gave a lecture uh, at a meeting of the Arya Samaj, and after his lecture, some one man approached Guru Maharaj and said, "You know, if the finite can understand the infinite, then that's not fi that's not infinite." And uh, he was trying to say what he was trying to say was like, "Why are you talking about the infinite? We can't. There's no way the finite can have any grasp of the infinite." But immediately, Guru Maharaj's counter to that was, "No, if the infinite can't make himself known to the finite." then he's not infinite. Because the infinite must have infinite power, and that must, within that there must be the possibility that he can make himself known to us, the finite. So Guru Maharaj uses the example of an ant, like maybe in this room now there's an ant running around somewhere. He doesn't know there are you know, 20 people or so in this room. He just sees them as obstacles, objects. Either he has to go under, over, or around them as in, while navigating his way. He doesn't realize there are other living beings. But if one of us would touch that ant with our finger, then the ant could have some experience. Oh, someone is touching me. So similarly, we're like that. We're like ants running around. And we have no possibility of understanding the infinite. But if the infinite extends himself to us, touches us, oh, Something is touching me, something is moving me. So this way we can have some idea. But first of all we have to accept this principle of achintya, which means that ultimately it's inconceivable to our intellect. It's not just, some, it's not just something we use to like gloss over the grey areas. One of, our, one of Guru Maharaj's god-brothers, Judge Maharaj, he was actually Guru Maharaj's closest friend. And uh, I met him many times in Nabudi, but he didn't speak any English. But one of our sannyasis, Western sannyasis, he spoke very good Bengali. And so Judge Maharaj always questioning him, giving some question to him. And uh, so one day he posed a, a, very, a very kind of philosophical question. And that sannyasis reply after... He, and gave a few attempts, but Judge Maharaj wasn't satisfied. And then, then, Guru Maharaj, I mean to say, uh, Judge Maharaj said, so, so, like, what do you say? And our sannyasi said, it is a chintya, it is inconceivable. And, uh, and Judge Maharaj laughed and he said, and any question you can't answer, that will be your answer, right? It's inconceivable. So, it's not that. It's not that we can just like gloss over whatever we don't understand. We just oh, it's inconceivable. It's actually a prerequisite for us to understand Mahaprabhu's teaching that we have to accept that our capacity as finite beings is uh, limited. What we can cram into the you know our skull is uh, is must be limited. Like if you have a glass of water, it'll only hold so much. You can keep pouring water, but it's just going to overflow. So similarly, our, our, consci our own consciousness can only contain so much. And as Srila Sridhar Maharaj would say, no amount of finite can ever equal the infinite. So, so faith, now faith takes over. Faith takes over from the intellect and those who are uh, sumedasa, those who are blessed with um, some kind of divine, uh, how you say, um, capacity to relate to the truth. They are called sumedasa. Shri
Shraddha, faith, can go a long distance. And we shall be able to feel and conceive that faith that it is not merely imaginary. It has its tangible position, a most efficient position within us. When we can disconnect from all phases of perceptual experience, we can live in faith alone. When all the wealth of our experience deceives us and makes treachery with us, our faith will save us. The whole world of our experience will vanish one day with the final wholesale dissolution. Jnana mritya jara vyadi dukkha doshanu darshanam. But faith will remain faithfully attending us. That is the innate thing within our soul. And with the wholesale dissolution of our body, mind and senses, the whole world of our experience will go where? No one knows. The sun, the moon, the ether, the air, everything will vanish in wholesale dissolution. But only faith will live even at that stage. Faith is eternal substance within us. And we are told that with the favorable circumstances of faith, we can go back to God, back to home. Back to home, sweet home. Such highest prospect is given to us who are in this world of mortality, which is a burial ground and cremation ground. Here, everything is bound to be buried. The boast of heraldry, the pomp of power, all that beauty, all that wealth ever gave, awaits alike the inevitable hour the paths of glory lead but to the grave. That's Thomas Gray's elegy to an con uh, English churchyard. It's in interesting. When, um, when I was assisting Sagar Maharaj in um, publishing Srila Sridhar Maharaj's Bhagavad Gita, The Hidden Treasure of the Sweet Absolute, Srila Guru Maharaj told us we would, need, we would need to see some of the original commentaries of Sridhar Swami. So we knew that, the, that those commentaries were held in the British Museum Library. So we arranged a um, membership, one for, one for Sagamaj, one for me. And, uh, and we went there to, for researching those things. They were very reluctant to give us a membership. Normally you have to be studying for a PhD, but as soon as they realize that you're a Hare Krishna, they want to shut you down straight away. Because one of our erstwhile colleagues, not from this mission, but from a uh, sister mission, got himself a, a membership there, took out some holy books. You can't take them out, but you can, you know, to read them. They even let you photocopy a few pages if they're not too delicate. But what did he do? He took a razor blade and razor bladed out some pages and stole them. So, so after that, they like, no, we're not allowing Hare Krishnas to have any, uh, you know, any membership here. But we had a letter, we got a letter from Srila Sridhar Maharaj saying that we were publishing this book and, and we needed membership. And, uh, and that seemed to carry enough weight for them, so they, they gave us a um, membership there. So we found that commentary of Sridhar Swami, and we found many other things. But one thing that I found was there, were many, there are, are many books there, or many papers there, written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Is it British Library, sir? British Museum Library. Well, it's British Library, British Museum Library, same thing. Now they, then the Oriental Manuscripts Department was in Store Street, just off Tottenham Court Road. Now they have a big facility just near to St. Pancras Station. Yeah. I've not been in there, but this was before then. Anyhow, um, so we found many things written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur under his previous name, which was Kedanath Dutta, and many, like the Adventures of Puru, the Poriad, this was, he, he made this, it's about the last Vedic king. He wrote this when he was at school. 
a student and many other things. Marriage systems of Bengal is another one. And uh, lots of other things. But one thing I found was that he had written a Bengali prose translation of this poem. Thomas Gray's Elegy to a Country Churchyard or to an English Country Churchyard. And there are many other things as well there. I actually found, you know, Sagamaj was doing the scholar work. I was just like hunting for any kind of nectar that I could find there. And they are, there is some nectar there. They have original leaf writings of Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami there. That, you know, he wrote Chaitanya Charitamrita and other so when you found that piece off, was that recently? Sorry, what? Was it recently? Oh gosh, no, it was like 30 years ago. And, um, but then we found one, I, just, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but we, did, we found one book um, written in Bengali, and it, it's called Chaitanya Lilamrita Sara. And uh, they, they put the author, Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Maharaj, so we looked at it, and uh, Sagamaj looked at it, and he could read it, I couldn't read it. But you can't take it out with you or anything, you know. You have to, that was one that you had to handle with these white gloves, you know, because mm-hmm. it's very um, uh, fragile. But next time I was in Navadweep, I said to Guru Maharaj, oh, when we were exploring in the British Museum Library, we found this book written by you, for Chaitanya Lilamrita Sara. And Guru Maharaj like scratching his head and he said, oh, I never wrote any book with that title. And he's like, and I said, yeah, we saw it there, Maharaj. Just, your name was there, everything, you know. Then, then Guru Maharaj said, oh, now I remember. He said, it's not my book. It was written by Ananta Vasudev Prabhu. He wrote this book and I wrote the introduction to it or the foreword to it. So they obviously saw my name in the foreword and thought that I was the author and have mistakenly given me as the author there. So, uh, mystery solved. Do you happen to know what happened to the pages that were severed out of those books? What became of those? Well, I know the devotee that, that stole them quite well. Right. Does he still have them? I don't know. I don't know. For, like I said, it was like 30 years ago, so I don't really remember... I never, re- I never talked to him about it or anything, so I don't know. But um, that was a very stupid thing to do. There's a, you know, the authors of those books sent them there not for somebody to steal for themselves. They sent them there for, you know, so that they could be like preserved there. Anyway, now, this is the world of experience. Everything leads but to the grave. But faith is not treacherous. It will remain within, with the soul, and grant hope, prospect, and sustenance. And what kind of sustenance? Home comfort. Back to God, back to home. When there is the proposal of such an alternative, who would be such a fool to run after the experience of this civilized atomic world. Experience and science are all the jaws of death. Faith is nothing vague. Yanisha sarvabhutanam tasyam jagarti sangjami jasyam jagrati bhutani sa nisha pasyato mune Some persons, this is famous verse from Bhagavad Gita. Some persons are awake in the world of experience and their day is the world of experience and their night is the soul's world, God's world. And another class of men are wakeful in the soul's world and are sleeping in this world of experience. This world is darkness to them and they are quite awake in the world of faith. They find that the world of faith is their permanent world. The soul, however tiny, has a substantial position in eternity. It is an eternal factor in the world of faith. There we shall find, whatever I see is eternal. Nothing will be effaced at any time, 
and I am a member of the world of reality, and through faith I can reach such a subtle plane that never dies or changes. There is such a subtle higher plane, and my soul is a member of that plane. The soul is wakeful there and is asleep in this world of experience, having no connection with it. And the man of the world of experience with flesh and blood, he is wakeful here. Whereas the real world, the soul world, is the dark night, is like dark night to him. In our present condition, it may seem almost non-existent, but such a plane is the substantial eternal reality. Its existence supersedes all. All may vanish, but faith stands forever. Faith is the particular potency of Srimati Radharani. Shukha Rupa Krishna Kare Shukha Ashwadana Bhakta Gane Shukha Dite Hladini Karana This is from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Ecstasy personified is Krishna himself, and he feels, tastes, and enjoys himself but only through faith. It, it, uh, but only through pe faith is it possible to transmit and distribute that ecstasy and joy to others. Faith is the very nature of the Hladini Shakti, the ecstasy potency, which is represented in full by Srimati Radharani. It can transmit total Krishna consciousness to the devotees outside. Faith is the halo of Srimati Radharani, by the light of which others may understand Krishna. When the negative combines with the positive, realization of their function is distributed to all other negative parts. The central mother negative can expand and transmit such faith and joy. Shraddha, faith, is a special substance about which we must inquire. It is not merely abstract. We are wakeful in this material world, but there are others who are completely awake in that plane of faith, while this world of matter, <coughs> the tangible world of our enjoyment and exploitation, is underground to them. It is far, far away from their conception. They are deeply engaged in the world of service through Shraddha, faith, Ya Nisha Sarvabhutanam Tasyam Jogati Shangyami. To them, even to see Krishna is a type of enjoyment. They think, no, we won't disturb his sweet will. Whenever he likes to, he may call for us, and then we shall have a chance to see him, otherwise not. If for my personal satisfaction I desire to see Krishna, O oh Krishna, come and stand before me so that I can see you and satisfy my eyes or my inner hankering. This is a kind of imposition by our exploiting nature. A devotee does not want this. Actual devotees do not allow these thoughts to enter their minds, but they maintain the mo this mo mood. Whenever he wishes to, he'll call for me, and then I shall have a chance to see him. Madhavendra Puri maintained his body by eating only what automatically came to him without begging from others. Otherwise, he would fast. One day, Krishna himself came and supplied some food, and he asked, Why, Puri? Why don't you go and beg for food? Why do you act in this way, sometimes fasting? Hearing of this incident, we may think that Madhavendra Puri was greatly fortunate. Krishna himself came and supplied food to him. But we find higher devotion in Srila Sanatana Goswami. When Srimati Radharani came and supplied foodstuffs to Srila Rupa Goswami for cooking paramana, milk rice, Srila Sanatana Goswami was very disturbed at heart. What is this, Rupa? Did you aspire after something for me? Yes, I did, my lord, my Gurudev. I thought that if I could obtain some milk and rice 
I would be able to pre prepare some paramana which is very dear to you. Then I would invite you to take that prasad. <coughs> oh, you have done a great wrong. This is so tasteful. I have never found such tasteful things in this world. Therefore, that it must have some extraordinary origin. Who gave you the necessary ingredients you wanted for this preparation? Srila Rupa Goswami replied, A girl came, and she gave it to me in the name of her family guardians. Srila Sanatana Goswami wanted to know, Who's this girl? But she was nowhere to be found in the nearby village. Sanatana Goswami could understand that Srimati Radharani herself had come and supplied these ingredients. He said, Oh, we are searching after her in order to serve her. And she came and served us. What is this? Just the opposite, my dear brother. What have you done? You wanted something for me, and that was supplied by her. But we want her so that we may serve her. But she came and served us, and then went away. This is a great misfortune. He was greatly dissatisfied and left that place with these thoughts. Rupa Goswami couldn't take that prasadam. He thought, I invited my guru, Srila Sanatana Goswami, in order to serve and satisfy him. But quite the opposite result came. He's left dissatisfied. He ran after Sanatana Goswami to try and satisfy him. So we see that Krishna himself bought foodstuffs to Madhavendra Puri, and that may be considered a very great fortune. Yet, in the instance with Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Sanatana Goswami, a similar event occurred, but was considered a great misfortune. In the higher type of devotion, there is never any desire that Krishna or his associates will come to serve and supply us, or that he will show himself to us. To impose our whim on him is not actual service. Whatever he likes to do, he may do. And whatever may be necessary from us, we shall consider ourselves fortunate if we are given the chance to supply it. Exhaustively eliminating all our desires in the extreme, we are to place ourselves fully at the disposal of the command of the Supreme Lord, who is never to carry out any order or wish of ours. This reminds me when we were trying to raise money for our um, centre in West London before we purchased that, trying to raise some money amongst the devotees, and we were like all kind of, this is like far beyond us, how we're ever going to get this kind of money, we just don't know how to do it. And my oldest daughter, at that time she was like maybe 10, maybe less, I forget now, and she said, she said, Dad, you want trying to raise the money to, to build a new temple. She said, he said, isn't it that, that in Vrindavan all the trees are wish-fulfilling trees? Desire trees, Kalpa Riksha? I said, yeah, that's right. And he said, just go and ask them for the money. <laughs> <laughs> They'll give you the money, won't they? And I, I was telling this to Srila Govinda Maharaj. And he just said, sure. He said, oh, she's very clever. He said, then... then uh, he said, what did you say to her? Like, what was your reply to her? And I, and I said, my reply was, yes, they are Kalpa Riksha tree, but they don't listen to my prayer. You know, I'm not qualified you know, for that kind of prayer. Why will they listen to me? You know, just a guy off the street. And then, uh, and then Srila Govinda Maharaj said, yes, good answer, but wrong answer. It's the wrong answer, he said. And I said, oh, what's the proper answer then, Gurudev? And Gurudev said, the proper answer is that we are to serve them, not for them to serve us. So, although they are the wish-fulfilling tree and you know, they provide everything for the devotee's service, still those divine things are not for, not for us to try and take advantage or to try and, um, uh, how do you say, um, engage in our service. Guru, Guru Maharaj, Guru Dev, they've given some service to us, 
to the best of our ability, we have to try to do that and not to rely on, on others, or espe and especially not those who are worshipable to us. <laughs> Once, when, when they were going to buy this new center, one of our devotees, I won't say his name because he's, he's still around, a good devotee, but when, when, when they were raising the money, and he, this devotee is very wealthy, businessman and you know like has a lot of money and and uh, so Guru Gurudev was asking him um, you can give some money for this project in London and then and then that devotee said how much are you going to give said to, to Gurudev how much are you going to give and Gurudev just he looked at us and he said what is this <laughs> like not the right, not the right thing to say to Gurudev at all. He didn't. Uh, Gurudev didn't appreciate that one bit. By nature, he is eager to supply everything to his devotees. Yoga came on Vahamyaham. but the higher devotees do not like that Krishna will supply them with anything, or that he will render service to them. Such is the purity of their devotion. Through their faith they think, He is my Lord. I don't want to have his darshan merely to satisfy my lower faculty of perceiving that he exists. To consider if I can see him, then I shall be satisfied that he exists, is a very low standard of faith. We have no capacity to see him. To make him our object, keeping ourselves as the subject, is a low standard of faith. But higher, intense faith fully proves that he is. That wonderful cause of everything, he is present. This is the, this is the atheist's challenge, isn't it? They shake their fist and they say, if God exists... I challenge him to appear before me right now to prove that to him. No, he doesn't come. There you are, there's the proof God doesn't exist. I asked him to come, he didn't, he didn't appear. Like he's got nothing better to do with his time. But that, that's kind of like, um, you know, standing outside Buckingham Palace and demanding that the king comes down and has a word with you. What will happen is that the police will just take, they'll uh, prog march you off and put you in a van in a padded cell with a straitjacket. <laughs> because it's insane, right? So that kind of challenge is insane. Unless you show yourself to me, I don't believe you exist. It's an insane kind of challenge. Guru Maharaj said, the atheists, they shout very loudly from inside their cage. But they're still inside a cage. A certain section claims, like the philosopher Charvak, that no, no, there's no God or higher substance. Whatever we see on the surface is everything. But deeper faith says that the cause is He from whom everything emanates. He by whom everything is maintained, and He, Jai Gurudev, And he who by whom everything is maintained, and he into whom everything finally enters. Jatoba imani bhutam jayante jena jatani jatprayanti abhisham vishanti tad vigyashashva tad eva brahma. This is from the Tata Triya Upanishad. Merely the effect is not everything. But the cause has its existence. And what is the nature of the cause? Some identify him as Brahman, some as Paramatman, and some as Bhagavan. God is the designer and the design that sorry, God is the destiner and designer of everything. He has created everything and he is controlling everything. Everything is automatically existing 
with him as a particular potency of his. Give up everything and try only to have faith and everything will be found. Everything is there. Shakala chadiya bhai, shraddha devira gunagai. Do not demand for any proof because that is meaning, that is meanness. To search after proof as to whether he is or is not is meanness. With deep faith, automatically it is known. Yes, he is. Jo man pashanti sarvatra sarvam cha mai pashati tasya hamna pranashyami sacha mena pranashyati. From Bhagavad Gita 6, chapter. For one who sees me in everything and everything in me, I do not remain unseen. And he also is not unnoticed by me. He never sways in his thoughts of me. Everything is in him, and he is also everywhere. This is the characteristic of he for whom we are searching. Omkara, the monosyllable Om, is the seed of theism. Om means yes. Always, whatever... Wherever we cast our glance to search, in one word the answer is yes. Yes, what you are searching for is. You are searching for happiness, pleasure, joy, fulfillment. You're in want. And in one word, yes, fulfill, fulfillment is there. Om takes the form of Gayatri, then the Veda and Vedanta Sutra. Then it takes the shape of Srimad Bhagavatam and the Leela, the divine pastimes of the Lord. After they had the opportunity of participating in the Rasa Leela of Krishna, the Shruti, the Upanishads remarked, Oh, we could not conceive this much. We could not inform the public about Rasa, ecstasy of such a high type. Raso Bhai Shaha. He is rasa, anandam, ecstasy. It plays in such a way. We could not understand so much and we could not give it out to the public. So our Lord, we beg your forgiveness. In the full play of your joyous pastimes, the magnitude of your ecstatic nature is inconceivable. Please forgive us. We fail to reveal to the public that the highest joy is of such fulfillment in the extreme, so much so that karma or lustiness, the mere nasty thing in, the, in this mortal world, is found here to be the most beautiful and the highest type of charm. Even the union of men and women, which is normally to be hated and rejected, we find that this ecstatic joy includes even that. We could not understand our Lord. Rather, the conception we presented is dry in comparison to this joyous life. Thus, we should be careful to approach genuine faith. We should approach the devotees for faith. They are like many pillars of faith. We are told that electricity can flow everywhere, but practically we must be connected with the dynamo. Dynamos can show electric power, and similarly, there are many devotees, past and present, in whom we can find real godliness. They stand like pillars of faith, in their dealings and example. If we approach Christ, his ideal and sacrifice will encourage faith in us. If we examine the history of Prahlad, we will come to understand what a great devotee he is. Our hearts will become filled to the brim. Here is faith. Here is the presence of the Almighty. When we pay heed to the devotees, with their help, we are raised to a particular high standard of faith. We are in a safe position when we turn our attention towards the devotees. They are like so many pillars standing and proving His presence. 
summarily neglecting the enjoyable objects of this world, they stand with their heads erect, proving and declaring their experience of the Supreme Entity. Faith in the devotees, the Vaishnavas, grants us the most substantial help. Such a position is not flickering but firm. One who has faith in the Vaishnavas achieves devotion of a tangible character. Otherwise, with only abstract faith in the Lord, without faith in the devotees, we are but beginners in the stage of Konishta Adhika. This is an unreliable platform. Our devotion reaches a reliable standard when we can find devotion in the devotees and recognize their importance. The devotees are above even Shastra, the scripture, the tangible stage when our real faith in them develops is the middle stage, the Madhyam Adhika. In that stage, the opposition of the non-devotees may sometimes seem to particularly hide the Lord in our consciousness like an eclipse. But the barriers within are dissolved when direct contact with the Supreme awakens in the highest stage, Uttam Adhika. There we, one can trace the Supreme Entity everywhere and in every moment. Yoman Pashyati Sarbatra Sarva Bhuteshoja Pashyad Bhagavad Bhavan Atmana It is His will. He is there in His Leela. He may play, play hide and seek with His devotees. Sometimes He may be clearly visible to them and sometimes He may hide and the devotees cry. Oh, where are you, my Lord? I don't feel your presence. I can't see you. How can I stand? How can I lead my life without you? I can't live. You are so charming and so joyous and the giver of so much fulfillment. I can't live without your relationship. In this way, they begin to wail and cry. Everything is dependent upon him alone. If we attempt to trace the cause of everything, we will find that the cause is something which in turn has its cause, which also has its cause, and so on. But when we find His personal beauty and charm, we will realize, yes, this is the final object that we and the whole world are searching for. There is a Bengali song, O mountain, O Himalayas, O Alps, O Sumeru, what are you searching for with your head erect? Have you seen the creator of this world? And have you attained the fulfillment of your life? Have you seen him? In this way, the devotee feels in his heart that everything is searching for the Lord, who is the fulfillment of life itself. In the phenomenal world of birth and death, there's nothing tangible that should attract our attention. Our inner heart search is for Sat, the eternal, Chit, consciousness that satisfies our perception, and Anandam, the satisfaction of our hankering after beauty and love. When love awakens, the function of the brain retires. We will understand that love is the fulfillment of life. This is a special phase of life. Wherever we may be, we are automatically always searching, 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 searching for that yes. Om. Om means a big yes. What you are searching for, it is. What your inner heart is hankering after, that is existing. Your search must progress from the apparent to the inner substance. The Lord of your search is there. Thus, Omkara takes us to Gayatri, then the Veda, Vedanta Sutra, and Srimad Bhagavata, which describes the ecstatic, joyful side of the Lord. The infinite comes so close to the finite that the finite thinks he's one of us. 
He plays the part of such a cl close friend that we think that he may be one of us. This is his highest grace and kindness upon us, and this is our highest attainment, which is found in Vrindavan. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught that we must abandon everything and make only our aim that Vrindavan Lord, Sri Krishna, Shayam Bhagavan, God of Gods, Lord of Lords. He is the source of unlimited manifestations of supernatural power. Therefore, Mahaprabhu announced, search for Sri Krishna. You have no other duty in this world. Take his name, talk about him, and whatever you do, go on in this way. Very swiftly you will achieve the fulfillment of your life. Go on taking his name, go on searching for him, go on talking about him, wherever, whether you are sleeping, eating, quarreling, whatever you are doing, combine it with Krishna. But that search for Krishna should not be hypocritical. The sincere seeker will receive help and direction from the real devotees. With the help of the scriptures and the devotees, and with sincerity within you, go on searching after Krishna everywhere. Whoever you meet, talk about Krishna, and don't talk of anything that is a prey to death. Wife, children, money, everything will evaporate at the next moment. So don't think about them any longer. But in every step of your life, do everything only for the eternal joy. Krishna is not your concoction. He can be known through sadhu and shastra, not the mundane world of your enjoyment. Nor can you find Krishna in abhorrence or renunci renunciation. But Krishna is with the sadhu, the pure saint. Krishna is the fulfillment of the one of the positive inquiry of the heart. Those who are carried away by the charm of the external world cannot understand their inner temperament. They are unfortunate. Nate vidhu swarta gatim hi vishnum durashaya je bahir arta manina. The main necessity is to keep company with the sadhu who has real faith in Krishna. Such a sadhu is very, very rare in the world. But if you want to achieve the highest good, make that ideal the crown of your head. In any way possible, take the help of that association. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Koi, Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi, from Chaitanya Charitamrita. A moment's association with the Sadhu awards all success, and this is the verdict of all the scriptures. Kim Pamartaya Bahu Bir Parokshir Hayanaya Iha Varam Muhurtam Biditam Gatate Shreyase Jata. Imperceptibly, many, many years pass uselessly in the life of a person intoxicated by mundane pleasures. Better if only for a moment he realize that he is losing valuable time, for he may thus become serious to attain his eternal benefit. Here, Shukadeva Goswami says that one moment is sufficient to solve the whole problem of life. If it is properly utilized in Sadhu Sangha, at all costs, try to utilize the opportunity of Sadhu Sangha, the association of the agent of Krishna. What is the necessity of living for ages and ages if we are unconscious of our own interests? One moment properly utilized is sufficient to solve the whole problem of our life, for which we are eternally wandering about in this plane. 
we must be wakeful to our personal interests, not negligent. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to direct us to our real interest within. You do not know your own heart. You are forgetful to your own heart and its demand. There is a wealth within your heart. Try to find it. Eliminate the foreign things and you will find your heart to be a temple of Krishna. With the help of a proper guide, search your own heart and you will find Krishna there. This is not a foreign thing to you. Every heart is a temple of the Lord. It is your property. It is your home. Back to God, back to home. Well, what can we say to follow that? This is Sri Sridhar Maharaj on fire. When we would sit with Guru Maharaj, Some days he would say, oh, I'm not feeling very well today. Or he would say, Mr. Cold has come to visit me today. <laughs> I'm not feeling very enthusiastic to speak anything. And then he may, may say, need any question? And somebody would ask some question, and this was you know, like Guru Maharaj's response. He would speak for like two hours sometimes getting more and more intense and excited and he would say this is like medicine to me to sit with a small group of devotees and discuss the higher meaning of the scripture this is like my medicine so I don't like big crowds of people and many things he said, in fact, when so many people come, I get besides myself. That was his expression. I get besides myself. I don't know what to do. And we all descended on Guru Maharaj in the early 1980s. Like maybe, how many down here, Drew? At least a hundred devotees, right? We were all there. More than that. We were all there. <laughs> and Guru Maharaj would say, and you will say, Sri Maharaj is very mean. But I say to you clearly, you have to go and live somewhere else. <laughs> he said, you can't live with me. I can help you as much as I can help you, but you'll have to find somewhere else to live. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, we had, some, we had some allowance. We made some arrangement. There was some land nearby, owned by one of Guru Maharaj's disciples. We put a big pandal there and the devotees were staying in there, fighting with each other. And it was baking hot. You know, it was made of corrugated iron and tenting, you know, that kind of canvas tenting. And uh, it was really hot there. One of our devotees, when I found him, he was just lying in a puddle of muddy water to keep cool. <laughs> I, I arrived a few days after the, uh, the like main throng of devotees, due to circumstance, <coughs> and uh, and so I and I arrived quite late at night. So they gave me like a room in the mott, and uh, the next morning I went and uh, met Shri Sridhar Maharaj, and he asked me, "Oh, you have bedding? You have you know like very kind of." human. That was my first impression after being in a, another organization where the gurus were all like up on Mount Olympus, you know, we were all like, you know, this was not Guru Maharaj, very like a very human person, accessible person. And uh, then uh, some of the, there were a few of the other devotees were staying there at, in the mott, especially if they had children and that, so they gave some rooms to them, some place there. And uh, one of the devotees who was staying there, a little, he was a little mean to me, and he said, you can't stay here, you know, you have to go and live with the devotees down in that big pandal down the road, three miles down the road. I said, okay. So I went down there to, like, scope it out, see it, and oh, it was horrible. 
like I say, it was baking hot in there. Everyone was like cooking in their own sweat. You know? <laughs> and and everyone were, and each one had like set up a little camp for themselves. And everybody was fighting with everybody else. I mean, not everybody, but enough people were fighting to make it very unpleasant there. <laughs> so, were you there, Diane Pruel, that in that tent? Yeah. So Diane Pruel confirmed that that was the case. So uh, I thought, Do you know, I really don't want to stay here. So I, w I went back up to the mot, and uh, and I just like kind of snuck up to Guru Maharaj's room and he's sitting in his chair, he's chanting Japa. And I bowed down in front of him, he said, Kay, like who is it? I told him, and, I said, and he said, what do you want? And I said, oh Maharaj, I just wondered, would it be possible that if I could stay here in your mod, would it be possible? He said, yes, if you can find some place you can stay. So I thought, Okay, this is good. <laughs> so, this is good. So, so then uh, they had a, they were building um, like a, a Western guest house, you know, where Madhusudan Maharaj used to keep his office there. That place, what do they call it? Paschapcha Bhavan or something like that. It was and uh, and on the ground floor there were some unfinished rooms. I say unfinished, like the floor was bare bricks. And uh, and the walls and no and no you know no door no window I mean just holes where they those were and I thought this will do me <laughs> no electricity nothing you know no, well, the book room is now there uh, near there yeah no, that that area yeah so so um, then I I got they gave me a sleep uh, not not a sleeping bag um, a mattress and a mosquito net. And the mosquito net was more holes than net. <laughs> so I, you know, I kind of fixed it up, and I'm just staying there. And I was happy to be there, you know. This was the 80s. Yeah, 1982, this was. And, uh, and there was no electricity in there, so no fan, nothing, you know. And I would just stay there. And I would just, in the morning, I would go up and sit with and hear Guru Maharaj. It was like some sannyasis were there and, you know, I'd just sit in the back and listen to the talk of Guru Maharaj. And then, and then from that Pandal, the three mile down the road Pandal, the devotees used to come up in the morning with a Sankirtan party and they'd go down around Navadweep and it was like quite a bizarre Sankirtan party, I have to say. And, uh, and but they would come and they would gather up all the, all of our devotees, at, like to take them down to the town on the Sankirtan. So I went once with them, and then the next day I thought I ain't going with that, them again for that party. It was really bizarre. I couldn't imagine what the local people must have thought. And really, I mean, it was really bizarre. Oh, you know, his lectures weren't recorded during that time. Mm. It was all on camcorder, weren't they? No, some on camcorder, but mainly on tape recorder. Okay. Or mainly audio. There were some, there were some videos, but yeah, not so some many. Videos, yeah, yeah. But, um, so when they would come in the morning, I'd hide. I'd find a little place to hide, and then until they'd gone on. I felt kind of guilty, you know? Felt a bit guilty, but as soon as they'd gone, I would shoot up the stairs, sit with those, you know, the sannyasis and those people who were discussing important things with Guru Maharaj. And I just stay in the background and listen, you know. So then one day, that same day actually, the second day, then the, uh, the San their Sankirtan party were coming down the road. And um, at Guru Maharaj's habit, or his, you know, like his observance, if a Sankirtan party would come, if he was giving a talk, he'd stop the talk, He'd get up and go to the front, and he'd like hear their kirtan and say some prayer, and uh, then he'd sit down and carry on with his talk. So they're coming down the road; the kirtan's getting louder, and so Guru Maharaj stops his talk and he goes to the front. And he's like this, and he's listening, and they're coming in through the gate. You can hear the sankirtan coming through the gate, 
Then he came and sat down, back down, and he said, If the leader of the Sankirtan party is not a Shuddha Vaishnava, it may just be Namaparad. And I thought, okay, now, uh, now I feel justified for not going on the Sankirtan party. So I might just listen with, to Guru Maharaj's talks. And that was. Yeah. In a I remember. Yeah. They used to have a tent there. I remember, yeah. Sleeping bed. Yeah. It was nice. Yeah. In a big garden. It's a thing, isn't it? Yeah, we had a. We hired these portaloos, you know. Yeah. There's only one bathroom in the house, or maybe two of them. So we hired these portaloos, I mean, they had to be like craned over the, over the house to go into the backyard. No one used them. Not, nobody used them. They'd rather queue up for an hour outside the proper toy. Garden was very big. Big garden, yeah, big garden. Not Blavin Road. Blavin Road. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Mr. Tanki was our Mr. landlord. Tanky. Yes. And he had a small, he had a small sweet shop. And uh, now he has a big sweet shop. Yeah. Uh, I think from our rent, from our renting his house, he got a big sweet shop. That was his name. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> and he was a good man. And then the neighbors were a little, first a little bit upset with us. It was a, we're quite loud people, you know, these Hare Krishna people, quite loud. Don't blow your feet too loud yeah. in the morning. <laughs> but... Was he an Englishman? Yeah, yeah. But Udharam Prabhu was in, in sort of running the temple there. He, uh, he would, when we had a big festival or something, he would go to the neighbors with a big bunch of flowers and some prasadam and and then they became our friends. And this was 92? Yeah. In 92, when Srila Govinda Maharaj first came to London, yeah. That, and from that rented house, we transitioned over to here in 96. And here we are to this day. So. There's a nice pond beside it. Yeah. And the, there was a dairy, a dairy just opposite. Dairy, say dairy. It was cows, yeah, cows. And, cows and, but there was also like a where the milk floats would come and to load up with the milk. Which part? It's, you know, you, you know where the yeah Manor Park. Where oh, the, Manor Park. Yeah, there's a kind of army surplus oh, yeah, shop yeah. on the corner. Yeah, yeah. So just beyond there, round the corner, that was where we had had that rented house. Mm -hmm. And Gurudev came there yeah. and uh, on his first world tour. I don't know, I think maybe, did he come again there? More than one time? No, I know, but before we moved here. Yes. Anyway, a few times he came yeah. and one time he, d he did the worship of R R Radha Shamsunda himself. Yeah. Did bathe them, dress them, everything. Showed us how it should be done. And we made a few little mistakes. He was very gracious to us. Showed us how to do that. But uh, Maharaj, uh, sorry, Devaki Prabhu, uh, it's like Guru Maharaj was saying that if the leader of the Sankirtan party isn't a Shuddha Vaishnav, that, uh, then, you, you know, <coughs> that, that's problematic, isn't it, in the everyday world? Um, well, could be, but really what the, the real meaning of that is that who, who's at the background of that. So if the if the devotees doing the Sankirtan are doing on behalf of a, a proper Vaishnava, proper source, connected with the proper source, then it has its value. But otherwise maybe not. Like we are well, no, well, we are often invited to just recently I was away, but during that time I was away. So they have some Kirtan Mela up the road there, you know. But who they're, under whose direction they're doing that Sankirtan, we cannot say. But we go there because we know we may not be perfect, but our master is perfect. Then we feel okay. That Kirtan is solid. 
It isn't, you know, it's n nothing to do with the uh, with the outward thing. It is to do with. Uh, what you're following strictly in the line. Yeah, it's to do with whose whose backing is behind that. That's like Guru Mahar, Srila Govind, Guru Mahar said, Srila Guru Mahar said, mere wiring isn't sufficient. You have to be connected to the power source. Otherwise, you know, if you, pl you plug your phone in, but there's not, it's not connected with the grid, your phone's not going to charge, is it? You know, or whatever it is, nothing is going to play. It, just because you've got the wiring, it has to be connected to the proper source. When it's connected with the proper source, then everything will f flows through that. So, otherwise we can't imagine that anyone can do Sankirtan, isn't it? So, you know, but, but that Sankirtan, if it's under the direction of a higher Vaishnava, then that's perfect. Well, Sankirtan means chanting in the street. Yeah. Oh, chanting in the street, okay. Yeah, and not just chanting in the street, chanting generally, Kirtan, but Sankirtan means con many people together, yeah, complete kirtan. But it has to be, it has to have its connection with the source, that's the all-important thing. Yeah. Who's backing? Mahamantra can make you pure. Can, but Maha Mantra has to come from the proper source also. It's not just something you hear or read in a book, or it has to come. Golo kera prema dhamma hari nama shankirtana it has to come through the proper agent. Otherwise, it's just can be just so much noise. But even if you chant around, it's like Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Is that, is that a good thing? Of course. Right. It's a good thing, of course. But if you, but for it to become Shuddha Nam, it, you must hear the name from a Shuddha Vaishnava. It, you must receive that name from a proper agent. Otherwise, it may just be, Guru Mahal said, like firing blanks. You could do that at home. Or... Uh, anywhere. But, mm -hmm. but, it, but the connection with the source is the only important thing. Guru Dev used to see a lot of kids and men of back lives. Yeah. That was really good. We record it for us. Anyway, think, everything happens in stages. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not that, you know, everybody has to show their membership card before they can come through the door. You didn't pay up your subscription this year, you're, you're not coming through. Uh, it's like, you know, it's, it's uh, a, Guru Maharaj would say, a heart transaction. It is, when your, when your Shraddha comes to a sufficient balance, then you feel the necessity for sadhu sangha. Birds of a feather flock together. Yeah, I heard one of the lectures. Yeah, so, so if, if you, whatever you're interested in in the world, you know, some people are interested in model trains, aren't they? You know, they have a big thing with trains and these little models and everything. So you bet your life that they've, that, that they've made friends with other people who are interested in trains so that they can get together and talk about all the latest models that are available, how to make the proper track and all of these things. The enthusiasts. <coughs> it's just an example. Or whatever you might be interested in this world, you'll try to find other people who have a similar interest. It's not different for those who are interested in spiritual life. They will search out other spiritual seekers like themselves. And that becomes you know, more defined as they progress. Like in two weeks time I go to the Ratiya from the Trafalgar Square. Mm. I don't know to ask because, the per you know, what I want to ask someone who's into it, like, you know, and there's no point to know someone down who's not into it. I mean, my kids are... Oh, you mean to go know. with? Yeah. Usually take my kids with all growing up now. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, but what, when... When it arises in your heart, the necessity for sadhu sangha, and from sadhu sangha, then you feel the necessity for the spiritual master. This is the first principle of spiritual life: is acceptance of a spiritual master. You'll need to seek out that spiritual master. When you are ready, the spiritual master will appear. This is 
how it is. And that's called Bhajana Kriya. That Bhajana Kriya means when you begin your real spiritual life, that you practice your Sadhana Bhakti every day under the direction of a Vaishnava. Everything is always under the direction of a Vaishnava. We are not independent agents. We are all connected with Krishna and Krishna uh, wants that we will connect with his agent. This is how he distributes himself. So through his agent we can, we can get the proper conception and the name proper. Then our sadhana properly will begin. Otherwise it is not a bad thing. The imitation of a good thing is also a good thing. But we should understand it's not the same. That the real thing begins when we receive the holy name from a proper source, from the proper agent. Otherwise, not necessary for anything. If you're, yeah, if lucky, you may be Namabhas, but more likely Namaparad. So Guru Maharaj said, you know, the Everyone were, they, when they're in the temple, very inter interested, excited about it. But then when they leave the temple, doing anything and everything, eating anything and everything. And, and Guru Maharaj was saying, and they're, then, then they are touching the Tulsi Mala, intolerable to us to think like that. So, you know, then, then uh, you, we have to be a little bit serious about spiritual life. Well, people, be, people are serious about many things in this, in this life, aren't they? Really, I mean really, people are serious about their career, about their family, about you know, their country, their whatever. It's really serious about it. But sh should, we be, should we be any less serious about our spiritual life? Because all of that is, is ephemeral. It's here today, gone tomorrow. But people can think it's the most important thing. But really, no. You're who you are, understanding who you are, and what life is really meant for, that's the most imperative thing. Everything else is just like uh, going on anyway. We can say, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, there's nothing you can do to prevent your karma from happening. That's already coming to you. Good or bad in this world, it's already predetermined by your past activities. It's coming to you. How much you're going to enjoy in this life, how much you're going to suffer in this life, it's already chalked out. Nothing you can do to prevent it, and also nothing you can do to make it happen. So, you know, if it's your destiny to become, you know, wealthy millionaire and all these things, it'll happen don't need to do anything, it'll happen. And, uh, and if you're not, it, there's nothing you can do that will make it happen. You know, people say, don't they, you know, like, if you work hard, you can become successful in this world. That's not true. Many people work really hard and have nothing at all to show for it. That's the reality. And some people don't seem to do anything at all and get everything handed to them on a plate. Isn't it? We know that, we see that. But it's... Uh, it's a it's because it's a result of our karma. It's coming. So that, so Saraswati Thakur says. So don't spend your time involving your involving yourself in that. It's coming to you. Then utilize your time for cultivating your inner life, your spiritual life, because that's actually the real thing that you you have necessity for. Everything else. It's just, it's just coming and going. Guru, is to analyze yourself first. What you want out of it. Yeah, this is important. This is important that you have to look within yourself and see what do I actually want in life. And you know, if you just want Happiness. external things, yeah. then okay, you can get all that. It's true, you can get all that. By hook or by crook, you can have that big car, that big TV, well, that big one. Ah uh, well, our Guru Dave would say, "How everyone, wa everyone wants to be happy, 
But how can you be happy if you ignore happiness himself? Happiness is a person. That's Krishna. Akila Rasamrita Murti is a, um, the very embodiment of happiness is Krishna. So happiness isn't just a state of mind or a state of being. Happiness is a person. And if you want to be happy, you have to connect with that source of all happiness. Krishna. Otherwise, you'll always be frustrated. Everyone, yeah, it's the same. Everybody, every single person wants to be happy. But everybody thinks that they'll find happiness here, there, everywhere, in this thing, that thing, this person, that person, this circumstance, that circumstance. That's called Maya. That's called Maya. You know, like we think, oh, things aren't going very well here. I'll just move to another country and then, then I'll be happy, right? You, you, it, it's not true because wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> you're, same person, same nonsense going on in your head. It doesn't change by just changing your outward circumstances. You have to change. I saw a, I saw a, um, what do they call it? like a cartoon, the politician. He's standing in front of a big group group of people, and he says, he says. Who wants change? And then, yes, we want change. And then he says, who wants to change? Silence. <laughs> now, this is the all-important thing. You have to change. I think it was Mahatma Gandhi who said, be the change you want to see in the world. You have to be that. What you believe, you have to be that. And you have to understand that that happiness isn't something that you can that you can get from external things. It, it's, it, it's already existing within you, you just have to tap into that. You just have to find where that is. And that's within your, your inner life. There, there you'll find happiness, not in the outward world. There's no doubt, you know, if you have a big car and a big house and a supermodel girlfriend and everything, there's gonna be, a, you're gonna have a thrill in your life, isn't it? You know, this is fantastic. You know, I've got the Ferrari, I've got the supermodel girlfriend, I've got the big house, the everything. You know, yeah, fantastic. But it doesn't last very long. You know, it doesn't the thrill wears out, and then you think like you know, oh, you know, she might be a supermodel, but I wish she'd put her, the cap on the toothpaste in the morning. Or, you know. And the way she makes that noise when she eats, I can't stand it. You know, <laughs> like, that's the nature of the world. We're never satisfied with anything in this world. So, it isn't going to give us what we want. You have to find what your actual necessity is. And that is, you need ananda. We, you know, Krishna is described as Satchidananda Bigraha in Brahma Sangeeta. That means the embodiment of sat, eternity, chit, consciousness, and ananda, ecstasy. So yeah, chit, content, uh, the, the individual souls, us, we're also told to be sat, chit, ananda. In our spiritual essence, we're also sat, chit, ananda. So, but if we analyze that, yes, sat, we exist eternally. We can, we can agree to that. And chit, we're conscious. I think, therefore, I am. You know, then I'm aware of my existence. But we're all jivas, aren't we? We're all jivas, but we, but we are sat and we are chit. But where's anandam? We don't feel any anandam, do we? We're not in a constant state of bliss. So, Sri Lanka says, anandam is the food of the soul. The soul has its own food, its own necessity, and that's anandam, and that's only possible by cultivating your soul. You can't get it in Queen's Market. You can't get it down the pub. You can't get it in the nightclub. You can't get it anywhere in this... It's not available anywhere, Ananda. There's lots of things posing as Ananda that they'll sell to you everywhere. But real Ananda, you can only get that. It exists in another, in another dimension. You have to try to access that dimension. And then you can only do that by the cultivation of your soul, by the uncovering of your soul. 
And in this age especially, the best way to do that is through Nam Shankirtan, through the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. So everybody here knows that, otherwise why are they, not, why are they here? So carry on, carry on. Join with the devotees, chant the holy name of the Lord and try to find yourself. Srila Sridhar Maharaj said, if once we all meet our real self, we'll feel ashamed that the mean person that we identified ourselves as being. That what we, who we think we are, we'll be ashamed that we thought that when we understand how wonderful our real self is, our golden self, that self within us. That exists. Just now it's covered by so much crud of this material world. We identify, oh, I'm too old to change my ways. I'm just, this is who I am, is it? It's not true. It isn't who you are. It's just who you think you are. It's just part of Maya. Because ultimately everyone is Nitya Krishna Das, the eternal servant of Krishna. And that eternal servant of Krishna is full of knowledge, bliss, and eternity. Satyam Shivam Sundaram. That's the nature That's of the everyone. Thing, <laughs> but it, before the film, it has it, it has its origin in something much deeper than that, and that's what we are attempting to find. And we know it exists because we we have seen it in the person of our of our guardians, our gurus. We have seen that in them, and that proves to us that it's real. And not only that, we see that they want to share that with us, to give that to us. That's why, that's why we've opened all these temples and so many things. Actually, they've opened. We've just done on their behalf. Our guardians, our gurus, they've made this place. You know, We spend so much money maintaining this place and trying to make it nice for everyone. You know, we, we, every week we, make, we cook a big feast for everyone. We're not asking everybody, can you chip in and give... No, we don't care for that. We want everybody to take Mahaprasadam, hear Harikata, and join in Harinam Shankirtan. But it's nice to give the donation. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But we're not going to say, what did you give? Okay, you can come in. You didn't give any, you can come in. We Everyone's just, welcome. You can just have a machine here. You can just, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like doing yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a machine. We may do it. That may happen. But anyway, that, my point is that, we, that happily we spend so much time and money and everything just for that so, that, so that people like yourself will come here and hear the message of our gurus and maybe find some inspiration in their life for that. You know, to whatever extent that is, you know. Then that's why, and not just here, all over the world. We have centers all over the world. Just for that reason. Yeah, I just thought, you just think that there's no temple now, then, they're Limerick. Yeah, these are the, our Limerick boys here. They, they're the leaders of our, of our mot over there. Well, this tradition, same tradition. Yeah, yeah, same, same. Yeah. There you are. Everywhere. Because, because this principle is universal. Birds of a feather flock together. When the devotees meet each other, they want to make some place. So they can practice Krishna consciousness, share it with other people. It's a wonderful thing. It's a worthwhile thing. And a wonderful thing. Anyway, I don't know how to do this. Probably the, uh, you said it's a program tomorrow, right? Yes, tomorrow is the disappearance festival of our Guru Maharaj, Srila Sridhar Maharaj. I do make it. What time is it? Like today, like 11 o'clock starting. Oh, in the morning? In the morning, yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, we'll be observing that tomorrow. So, we'll stop today. And uh, please, yeah, if you can come tomorrow, please do. Um, and now we can do Nama Shankirtan before the Lord of Sankirtan, Chaitanya Dev, who is Radha and Govinda combined. And very graciously they 
For 48 years they've accepted our service. And two years' time, I don't mean to say 38 years, two years' time it will be 40 years. Then we'll make a nice big festival. I'm thinking, <coughs> Nishinga Chaturdashi, they were installed 1985, Nishinga And next, on, in 85, in uh, 2025, that's a Sunday. But I want to make something on the Saturday, because Nishinga Chaturdashi is a, a fast day. So we'll make a big festival on the Saturday, and then something on the Sunday, and maybe the Monday too. Invite everybody. You remember the 30th anniversary? That was a very beautiful festival. We had here, we had big Sankirtan in central London, and so many people came. Is our day program here? Uh, Is our day program? That'll be an all day, oh, three day program, we're thinking. Three day. Yeah. All right. Jai Om Vishnu Pad, Shri Bhakti Sunda Govinda Dev, Goswami Maharaj ki Jai, Shri Bhakti Raktak Shrida Dev, Goswami Maharaj ki Jai, Bhagavan Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur ki Jai, Rupa Nugur Bhagya ki Jai, Shri Chaitanya Saraswati Acharya Vrinda ki Jai, Samadvaita Vaishnava Mandali ki Jai, Shri Hari Nama Sankirtan ki Jai, Nitai Gaura Premanandi.